Hello and welcome to our devotional time here at Temple Baptist Church. We are certainly thrilled that you have chose to be with us and we hope to be able to bring some encouragement to you. Uh, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 10 and I'll look at verses 19 through 25. Of course, the, the letter to the Hebrews was written to uh, Jewish believers in, in Jesus and they were being persecuted uh, and hardship and were in danger of uh, drifting uh, from their faith. And so it, it makes a lot of sense here to me that the author, whoever it is, there's some confusion about who, there are some debate about who the author of Hebrews is, but it really doesn't matter who it is, uh, who God chose to uh, write this. It's, it's godly inspired. It's God's word, no matter uh, who penned it for him. So, uh, but, uh, you know, they're in danger and, uh, you know, we, we need to find, remember that the confidence that we have in Christ and, you know, the, the things that are there and, and we need some confidence in our life. Uh, we find some things here that uh, the writer of uh, Hebrews points out about uh, confidence, uh, uh, you know, free and open access to God is one of the things we're going to find here. If you go, if you look at some of these verses, if you go back to chapter three and verse six, you'll find about that uh, verses chapter four, verse uh, 16. And then in verse 19 that we have and we will have in our scripture text here today. And then uh, if you look in chapter 10, again, I'll move on down to verse 35. You'll find some more about the confidence that, you know, the open access to God that these people had, uh, you know, service of God as a, you know, as a result, uh, the believers were encouraged to embrace the confidence that they were truly a part of God's house. There was no need to go back and anything that, you know, you know, they were confidence in prayer to enter into God's presence and worship. You know, the veil of the temple had been torn and they could maintain and that they could maintain the confidence in living out their lives. So that's the thing that they 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 think about. So let's look at our text here this morning. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he can consecrated for us through the will, through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart and a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he was promised, he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exalting one another so much more as you see the days approaching." Now, I've heard people say that we're brought up in a Christian home and uh, was faithful, their family was faithful in going to church. There was never any doubt about where they were going to be on Sunday morning. They were going to uh, be in church with that, maybe with the exception if they had a, a fever or a cold or something like that. And I've heard some of them say that they may have even went to church a time or two with a little bit of fever, but uh, you know, I think the world has changed a lot, and uh, uh, the number of regular church attendance, I would have to say, is not what they used to be. And so the question is is asked: Is uh, why are you know why? Are there not uh, any, of course, you know, the, the quick answer is why. Why are there not a lot of people going to church anymore? Uh, one woman asked her pastor this, and uh, she said, why do we go to church? And he said, we go to church for other people because someone may need you there. And that's one of the things about fellowship with God's people, isn't it? You know, sometimes maybe they just need us and uh, you know, and that's not the only reason we go to church, is it? Not wouldn't be the only reason we'd go to church, but you know, I, I think it it does uh, kind of go into the fact of what the uh, writer is saying here to the Hebrews. He's urged the believers to persevere in their faith. Like I said, they're being challenged on every hand uh, to 
go back to Judaism. You know, they're being persecuted. They're, all these things are happening. Uh, uh, and uh, to achieve the goal of, uh, you know, not giving up, meeting together. And I think that's one of the things that I have come out of this pandemic that we've had and where we were not able to come to church and not able to fellowship uh, with brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, you know, uh, you may be missed in, in our absence. If we're not here, you know, when people are not here, we miss them. Uh, we encourage one another. We need to uh, spur one another on towards love and good deeds, you know. So we need to keep coming together. And that's what the writer here uh, of Hebrews is saying, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exalting one another as so much more as you see the day approaching. As we see the days changing, you know, that's the more we need to do. Uh, you know, you may need them as well. They may need you, but you may need them just as well. You know, we appreciate you joining in with us today in our devotional time. And do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Let's get together in fellowship with the Lord. Come and be a part of our services. We meet at Temple on 8 o'clock at Sunday morning. Then we have Sunday school at 9. And then our second worship service is at 10. Then we meet at 6 o'clock. And then uh, we have Wednesday night Bible study at 7. Come and be a part of those services. May God bless you is our prayer.